they're speaking about Jesus is the Christ, the Old Testament prophecies. And what I want to do is I want to surface, uh, I want to give some surface information before we get into this message again. This is a series from last week. Um, I want, I just want to open the word. Let's look at two different places in the scriptures to see why this is so critical. Okay. So critical that we agree with this, understand this, uh, and, and, and really become what this is asking us to become. The messenger shall become the message. Amen. Why don't we go to Luke 24? Brent, I'm going to call on you in the back. Luke chapter 24, verse 25 through 27. Kaiki, you will do Acts chapter 17, verse 2. <clears throat> Acts 17, 2. We'll start Luke 24, 25 through 27. Let me set the stage. The apostles, uh, two men are on the road to Emmaus. They meet this guy on the road, and he begins to share with them. And we'll pick up here in chapter 24, verse 25. Starting uh, start 25 through 27. Okay, so Jesus is speaking to two gentlemen on the road to uh, Emmaus, right? Is it Emmaus or Damascus? Road to Emmaus, right? Okay. So on the road to Emmaus, Jesus is speaking to them. First, they don't realize who he is. And he begins starting at Moses and the prophets, okay? Moses being the law, the Torah, the first five books in the Bible, and the prophets, okay, the next... Uh, 32 books, we began to see that Jesus is using the word of God to announce himself. He begins with the platform which was given, in other words, the stage that was built for Jesus. He stands on the stage testifying that I am he. But he does it through the word of God. And let's go to Acts 17 too. I want to show you that Jesus and his first followers had the same method. Acts chapter 17 and verse 2. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so again, Paul, a convert of Jesus Christ, an apostle, an emissary, which means a sent one, go and do. That means I'm sending you out in my name to go and do all that I've asked you to go and do. That's what emissary means. That's what the word apostle means. In the Greek, it's apostolos, to be sent, an emissary. And as Paul sent out, what does he have? Paul, go and do all that I've asked you to do. How, Lord? Bring them the scriptures and testify to the Christ. Show them who I am through the word that I gave them. And so I think it's critical for us in the 21st century to know these words that were given to establish the kingdom. To know these scriptures that the Lord himself, that God used to bring understanding to man. To make man understand who he was. To reveal himself to mankind. Beloved, don't you think this is important? That we understand the very gospel it is of God. Now, when I say gospel, you say, I know what that is. Jesus died and three days later he rose again. That's good news. Amen. That is. But the gospel is more than that sentence, beloved. It's, it's the will of God, the heart of God, the mind of God, the feeling of the Holy Spirit, the second chance of God. It's the counsel of God. It's the community of God. This is all good news. In a world of bad news, we need good news. And it's good news to know that the Old Testament was written as a precursor to give understanding, to open the eyes to the personality of Jesus Christ. Let us examine some of these scriptures today. We're going to start in Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 35. Randy, I'm going to call on you first. Isaiah 35, and let's look at verse 4 through 6. And Debbie, you will then fulfill Isaiah 35 with Luke 7, 20 through 23. We're going to be looking at Old Testament prophecy, New Testament fulfillment. Old Testament prophecy, New Testament fulfillment. Why? Now, how blessed are you to live in a day where this is already done? This is like 
Can you imagine being a play-by-play -play announcer on something, a game that happened yesterday, but you got to do it as though it was all fresh? I mean, come on, this is awesome. There's no gambles here, beloved. We already won the game. Amen. Jesus' name. Go ahead, Randy. Isaiah 35. Yes. Say to those with Amen. Okay. The eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame man will leap like a deer. The tongue of a mute will sing for joy. Things that have never happened will begin to happen. Impossible things will become possible. Let's look at Luke 7, 20 through 23. Praise God. Hey, are you sure that this Jesus is the Christ? Just tell him this. Tell him that the eyes of the blind are being opened. Tell him that those that, were, uh, that are deaf are hearing the word of God. That those that are mute are speaking with joy. Those that were lame are leaping like deers. Beloved, in Isaiah 35, it says this. The Lord will come. And in verse 2 at the end, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. And then, what happens when we see God? You will see things you've never seen before. You will see impossible things become possible. Things that were not will now be. Now, we know also in Luke 4, Jesus is reading Isaiah 61. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim the will and ways of God. To make impossible things possible. In other words, right? To open the eyes of the blind, to open the ears of the deaf, to give uh, the, the lame ability to walk, to bind up the brokenhearted. Beloved, everything, if it's lost, it'll be found. If it's found, it will be blessed. If it's blessed, it will reproduce. If it's reproducing, it will be overjoy. The kingdom of God has come to planet Earth. Praise God. In Isaiah's prophecies, are being fulfilled every moment that Messiah is here preaching the will of his Father. Let's go to Psalm chapter 2. Let's go to Psalm chapter 2. Why don't someone read Psalm chapter 2, Scott? Psalm 2, 1 through 12. I want to give you a hint. This psalmist is prophesying about the relationship of Jesus Christ, his son. Praise be to God. Amen. Now let's quickly go to Acts chapter 4, 25 and 26. 
Now the believers here are gathered, okay? The Holy Spirit's come. Now they're praying for boldness, something that we're talking about now all over the Front Range and Denver metro area and all over the, the region of the Rockies and the coast-to-coast, -coast, international and national conversations. We need the believers to rise up. We need the church to be the church in this day and in this hour for the lost and dying world. And it says here in uh, verse 25, Who threw them out of our father David your servant said by the Holy Spirit, Why did the Gentiles or the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his anointed. Directly talking about Psalm 2. Why are they gathered against the Lord and his anointed? Jesus and his followers. Beloved, it's still today. Watch, if you don't believe me, watch the news and see for yourself. Are the nations gathering against the Lord and his anointed? Is the Lord no longer welcome in schools and places of uh, conversation? Why is it such a controversial subject, the name Jesus? Let's look at Mark 1.11. Here's the context. Jesus is being baptized by John the Baptist. And when Jesus came out of the water, I'm in 10, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and a spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Okay. This is validating our Psalm chapter 2, understanding that it's a dialogue between the father and the son. It says later in the word in Hebrews, to which one of the angels did the Lord ever say, today I've begotten you, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And let's go to Luke chapter 3, 22. Just another account. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. Beloved, anytime you see two accounts when two people are saying the same thing, there's credibility there. Matter of fact, at the witness of what? Two or three, let everything be established, okay? So we have two different apostles, two different disciples seeing the same thing, testifying of the account that when Jesus Christ was baptized to fulfill all righteousness by John the Baptist, that we hear this voice from on high, the voice of the Father this is my beloved son. You are my beloved son, and with you I am well pleased. That's validating, again, the Psalms. Now, beloved, when Psalm 2 was written, we're going to get into this today. When these Psalms were written by King David and some of his magistrate, beloved, that's like 1100 B.C. We're now 2017. The gospel is... Its origin and its original fulfillment is what? One, zero, right? Zero, one, two, three AD. Ando Domani, the year of the Lord. BC is before Christ, okay? Ando Domani, the year of the Lord. From the Lord on, okay? One, two, three BC, do the math. 1100 BC to three AD is 1100 in three years. This is, I mean, this is detailed sentences being released. This is not something that we watched on the news last week and repeated it today, and it's like, well, or it happened in the 1980s, and we're not sure. This is, there's, as we've seen last week, there are so many exact details. Why? Because God's very exact. He's not going to be ambiguous with us concerning his will. He's revealed it. It's in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. And his will's a mystery, but praise be to God, we have the mind of Christ. Let's go to Psalm 16. Jeremy Davis, Psalm 16, can you read verses 8 through 10? You will not let your Holy One see corruption. Okay? Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Verse 
Acts chapter 2. Men of Israel, hear these words. Or I'm in verse 22, Acts 2, 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works, signs, and wonders that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and the foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed in the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held in it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord ever before me, for he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh will also dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You will not let your Holy One see corruption. Okay? Where, how do we know that? Because it was written in the Psalms about Jesus Christ. That you will not let your Holy One Jesus Christ is the Holy One, the one who is set apart for you and for you and for you and for you and for me. Let's go to Psalm 110. Psalm 110. It says that David, by the Holy Spirit, spoke. Beloved, this is rich material. Thank you, Lord. Aren't we blessed that the Lord is equipping us to have the same education that the apostles had. Praise be to God. What literature did they have? They had Moses and the prophets and Jesus Christ. That sounds familiar? Anyone who has a Bible in their hands has the Word and the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. You have the Law, the prophets, and you have the New Testament which is the Holy Spirit's word perfounded, uh, perfected for you. It's profound, beloved. It's exact details, so you have them more perfectly in writing. Oh, how do I pray? How do I get the Holy Spirit to talk to me? Beloved, read the word. He's laid it out plainly for all to see. And praise God, he doesn't stop there. If you ask, you will have. Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That this dialogue, the Lord sends forth from Zion with your mighty scepter, ruling in the midst of your enemies. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter the kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, fulfilling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs with the wide earth. He will drink from the brook of thy way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Jesus' redemption and his salvation and his judgeship, it's all in the word, beloved. We can confidently look forward as the apostles and prophets who eagerly waited to know what was going to happen in the day in which you and I live. We should not live in such a way without confidence. We are waiting for things to happen. Beloved, we know what's going to happen. It's happening right now. Let's go to Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is so rich, I would say the whole psalm. Let's start reading it here. Um, Colette. Can you start reading Psalm 22 for everyone to hear? Now, this is interesting because I want you to know a couple things here. Okay, about, I'm just going to give you two clues about the cross. The cross and the crucifixion was adopted by the Romans, hear me now, in 519 B.C. This is the earliest uh, documented crucifixion, by a public execution by crucifixion. Okay? Was the first documented case... Uh, it originated with the Persians crucifying a number of people who opposed King Darius in Babylon. Okay? From the Persians, the practice of crucifixion was adopted by the Seleucid Syrian kings and from there was adopted by the Romans. Obviously, you can see that it came from the east and began to travel to the west. In 519, we have the first evidence of crucifixion. When was Psalm 22 written? Like 1100 B.C. 
Again, I just want you guys to understand. We're going to begin to read here some things that they never happened to David. Your hands were never pierced. Praise God. David was never touched by the enemy's sword. Not that we have record of. He was divinely protected by God. So we know he's prophesying here. And he's prophesying about Messiah. Let us read here. Let's start in verse 22. Is it 22? Yes. Verse 1, and just start there. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me, so far from saving me, so far from the view of my enemies? Oh, my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, and, and, and am not silent. <clears throat> you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. And you are Let's do this, Colette. Amen. I'm just, we're just going to skip to some. Let's go to verse 8 now. Start in 8. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Again? Yep. Yet he brought me out of the womb. He made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I did count upon you. In my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan and Tiglath. Roaring lions tear their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a pot, pot chard. Pot chard, yep. Okay, let's just stop right there. Pierced my hands and my feet. How specific do we need to get here? Okay. How specific do we need to get that you have pierced a bull? Uh, the bulls have circled me. And if you look at some of this language like the bulls, you look at the Roman legion guards and talking about the dogs casting lots for his garments. I mean, beloved, this, this actually materialized 33 A.D., it was written 1100, at least 1100 BC, and it materializes exactly word for word. Ilahi, Ilahi, Lama Sabachthani. What's that mean? My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Word for word, you've pierced my hands and my feet. David, when were your hands and feet pierced? Never. Read the historicity yourself. Jesus, when were your hands and feet pierced? 33 AD. On that day that your freedom was proclaimed forever. Amen. Beloved, this, the gospel is being preached for us. How do I preach the gospel? Start in Genesis. Work your way through. That's why we're studying this together. It is the very word that Jesus himself used. It's the word that Paul used not only to, to reason with men that were like, okay, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. What do you got? Hey, let's start there. Or how about guys that are like, not only am I not religious and I'm not spiritual, but I'm going to kill you if you oppose my view. Kind of sounds like where we're heading today. If you don't believe with me, you're a criminal. And it's not only now in society now. It's not enough if you don't agree with me, you know, that's okay. But now it's like, if you don't agree with me, you're evil. And I'll tell you, they faced the same giant in their day. Same principalities, same strongholds. What's different now? We have technology. The same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is the very source in which we derive our power. Let's go to Matthew 27, 39. So let's catch up to the account in 33 AD of the cross. We'll find some statements here that give validity to Psalm 22 and why it was written. Thank you, Lord. Now, I will tell you one thing about prophecy, which is so amazing. You can't make it happen. Even if someone says, you're going to say this, and then you say it, you can't make someone do to you what they did to Jesus. And have it be against your will in a court of law on a certain day and time, fulfilling the sun, moon, and stars lining up, the Bethlehem star lines up, the high holy days line up. 
the governmental systems line up to fulfill something that was written 1133 years prior. In Matthew 27, in verse 39, this is what it reads. And those who passed by derated him, wagging their heads. And saying, you said you destroy the temple and rebuild it. Save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. This is Jesus is hanging now. Let's go up rather to 33. They came to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. So he's being taunted, right? They're taunting him. The bulls and the dogs are circling around him. They're beginning to taunt him. They're spitting at him. They're mocking him. They offered him wine to drink in verse 34, mixed with gall, but he tasted it and he would not drink it. Remember he said that my tongue is clinging to the roof of my mouth. He was so dehydrated. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Beloved, this is play by play. And they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. Then the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him. That means they were, they were mocking, insulting, shaking their heads, making judgments about Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 43 and 44. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him. For now, if he desires him, for he says, I'm the son of God. Remember what it said in the Psalms. About let the Lord deliver him. Only the Lord could deliver him. Let's go to Mark chapter 15. Again, let's, look at, let's just look at several accounts. Mark 15 and verse 34. Let's add to this. And at the ninth hour, let's add some specific details. I said word for word. Here it is. Here's the account. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Elohi, Elohi, lama sabachthani. Which means... My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? How does Psalm 22 make its debut into the Law and the Prophets, into the Torah, into the Hoff Torah, into the Prophets, into permanent record? How does it make your way into a published, the number one selling book in the world in 1100 BC like this? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Word for word account. Let's go to John quickly. Let's go to John 19. In verse 24. By the way, man, a lot of scriptures. Praise God. Praise. We want a lot of scriptures, not a lot of opinion. Take notes. You can, for the rest of your life, if you have these scriptures, you are as equipped as the apostles with the Holy Spirit. Bless you. With the Holy Spirit, you are as equipped as the apostles. Like I said, there's not a person in here who can claim total biblical illiteracy from now on if you're attending these studies. Because you will know from Moses and the prophets as much as the apostles knew about the word of God. Now they had the Holy Spirit. Guess what you have? The Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, come and see me after we say amen. You will have the very weapons that the elite forces of heaven possess. Aren't you blessed? Praise God. John 19, 24 reads this. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, let's cast lots to see whose it shall be. It was to fulfill the scripture. This is what we were talking about in Matthew. They divided my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. We know this is where? Psalm 22, right? Psalm 22 in verse 18. Uh, Juliana, why don't you read that again? Take us back to Psalm 22, verse 18. That's the account we read in Matthew 27. We're reading about the bulls and the dogs circling him, making taunts and derision in Mark. Now we're in John 1924, and it's taking us to Psalm 2218. Why don't you read that, Juliana? They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Again, 
we know this is talking about Jesus because it's fulfilled. How did they know before Jesus was crucified, how did they know that this was him? Very simple. Did David, did they ever gamble for David's clothes? No. He had an honorable birth, honorable death. Praise God. To this day, David was revered. He was the apple of God's eye. He was beloved. Yeah, he had strife in his household, but he remained before the Lord. Nobody cast gar lots, uh, garments for his lots, but to Jesus Christ, it shows here, play by play, they're casting garments for his lots. And the soldiers did these things. Let's go to Hebrews 2.12. So stay, stay in Psalm 2, Juliana. You're going to read Psalm uh, 22, verse 22. And uh, Kaiki, let's go to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12. I know this is a lot of data. We always have every single, if not every single, it's minus one, like 99.8. Uh, but I would say, I would say, you know, 50 weeks out of 52 weeks, we have every single scripture that we ever use to teach and talk about in here. That's actually part of the, let me revise this. As part of our study, it's every single scripture. Sometimes the Holy Spirit brings, oh, yeah, that's like this scripture. Someone has a question. So we, we answer that with the word of God, in which case sometimes those are captured in the uh, digital notes. Sometimes those are not. But as far as the study, every single scripture is in the email every single week. If you want to get that, again, come up to me after service. If not, it's on LibertyDenver.com under our teachings. Okay, that's where you see this dialogue here. Okay, and under our email every week. For the announcements, if you sign up for that, you will get that. You'll get all the scriptures and all the notes. Question. And, and then depending on what's happening here, we do uh, a lot about and do the armrest over the wilderness phenomenon. Yes. Against Yes. But the face breastplate of righteousness. Of righteousness and the our sword is the word of God. So if we don't know the yes. word of God, we don't have our sword. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. If you don't know what the word is, it would be like you having a thing you don't know how to use. A car with no key. I think that we all, by the way. I don't really have time to study the Bible. Really? Do me this favor next time you're in front of your phone or your computer. Go to your Google search engine, okay, or Bing, one or the other, and just click on the history and see what you've had time for. You'd be amazed. YouTube video after YouTube, next thing you know, three hours went by. Woo! I just started clicking. Beloved, you know how much research you could do on biblical things? So at least pay attention while we're here because we're doing it together. Amen. Okay, let's do this. Uh, Kaiki Hebrews 2.12. Praise God. Let's also see redemptive hope during this dark, dark hour in history. Yep. Okay, now let's go back to Psalm 22, and let's look at verse 22. Let's look at this redemptive uh, statement here. Praise be to God. I will declare your name in the earth, and the most holy assembly will rejoice in you. Amen. So, meanwhile, while I'm, you know, publicly displayed, wounded, and unclothed, I will... I will tell of your name to my brothers, and in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Jesus comes back. He has that road to Emmaus. Here's Messiah. He's bringing them these scriptures. Don't you know the Messiah had to suffer? Read Psalm 22. Don't you know his nails had to be pierced? But I will yet tell of the goodness of God. I will tell his name amongst my brothers. I will sing his praise in the congregation. And beloved, history shows us that they did exactly that and that we do exactly that. 
Let's go to Psalm 18. This is our last section. Let's look at Psalm 18. Thank you, Lord, for this. Come on, are you guys grateful that the Lord is equipping us? Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved before man. Okay? This is what that means. Do you know that when you wear the title Christian, do you know that people who don't know the Lord automatically associate you with the Godhead? They automatically associate you with the Godhead. They think you know everything there is to know about Jesus. And they don't, if you don't know, it's like, then they think, ha, ah, you know, then they act like the devil has something on you. Beloved, let that not be said of us. Let that not be said of us, that we who are carrying the name of Jesus, the most beautiful name that there ever was, is, or will be. When he makes this available to you, to have as much knowledge as the apostles of God. You know, the guys with the little, and all the paintings, they have the little gold halo around their heads, like, oh, he, he. that could be you, beloved. You could know what they know. Right here. What, how do I get it? It's, you're already in it, beloved. Praise be to God. You are being transformed even now into the image of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible calls glory. Psalm 18, let's look at verse 22 and 23. Praise God. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now, I will tell you this. I've been to Israel twice, and underneath the old city, kind of like near the Wailing Wall today, you'll see it, all the pictures, the, the rabbis and the Jewish community go to the Wailing Wall, and they pray there, which is basically the closest place to where the temple was on Mount Moriah. And underneath there, okay, about... I don't know, 27 to 35 feet below is some of where the original street was, okay? Of course, it's been built up, and everything. every time things been destroyed, it's been rebuilt, and we know that those walls have been rebuilt several times in the 5th century, 13th century. And underneath on the ground, there's you're walking through you know, these tunnels, and all of a sudden there's this huge limestone quarried rock. And it kind of, all of them are flat, and this one kind of sticks out like this, literally like a corner, a cornerstone. And they talk about what the cornerstone used to be, the first one selected and the last one in place. And other people say, well, no, that was the first one there, and then they would build around it, you know, like as the cornerstone was the foundation, it harbored the weight. Either way you look at it, it says that they rejected that stone. In other words, that, that's not going to work. And it ends up being the stone of all stones. Have you ever done that? You overlooked, oh, that's not going to work. And matter of fact, the thing you never considered was the perfect thing. It was hidden from you. Or your, your mind was over here, but it actually was like, wow. I'll give you this example. How many of you are where you thought you'd be <laughs> during this time? When it was New Year's in 2000, and you're like, I'm making this, and I'm going to do this and be this. How many of you are actually in that place? And if you are, glory to God. But I know with a lot of us, we didn't really, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the mind, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. This is no different. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. You know, nothing is by coincidence, beloved. Oh, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. You'll never know what you're going to get. Oh, yeah, everything has a reason. There's a reason for everything. Let's be a little bit more specific. God has a plan, and you are involved in that plan. God has a story, and you're a character. Praise God. Let's go to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. And verse 42. Jeremy Davis, that's you, Matthew 21, 42. And we just have a few more scriptures. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Praise God. 
We see here now. Okay, Jason, you, you keep saying the Lord's using this. Yep, right here. Right here, we vector in on this. We zoom in on this part of the story. And we see Jesus using the scriptures in the law and the prophets to testify of himself, to testify the kingdom, to testify of his position. And we know that Jesus is the example, right? And we know that everything Jesus did, you can do, because Jesus doesn't exaggerate. He does not embellish things. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to puff them up. He doesn't need to use extra superlatives, okay? He is genuine. He's true. He's sober. Praise be to God. Have you not read? And they're like, uh, actually, I haven't. And other people are like, yeah, of course we've read. Well, now understand. And I think nowadays, if you were to say something, have you not read? They'd be like, no. Matter of fact, 80% of the population in Christian churches, you would say, have you not read? And they'd say, no, I haven't. Do you really think that should be an indictment against the church? I went to church for 40 years, every single Sunday, and I have never heard this. I've never read this. I mean, some people can say that. I think the Lord, and I think the Lord's going to equip everyone, not just here. Praise be to his name. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit in all flesh. What happened in the day of uh, Pentecost? The Holy Spirit was poured out upon the apostles. And what did he do? He turbocharged their life and their knowledge of the word of God. Beloved, if the Holy Spirit's here and you have no knowledge of the word of God, you are not going to be equipped in the manner in which you need. I want all of you to live a vibrant, and I want you to have an adventure. I want every day you to get nervous and experience the power of God and the mercy of God. And I tell you, if you have this in your heart and you are even willing to speak to one person, Come on, man, I collect that adventure you had even a week ago. It's like my heart's racing. I'm leaving. I can't. I had the same encounter the other day, and it was awkward. I was like, oh, I'm going to leave this place without fulfilling my destiny. No. Give me another chance, Lord. Then the chance came back, and I'm like, mm. you go for it. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Praise be to God. Let's go to Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians 2.20. Fernanda? Ephesians 2.20? Yes. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. Beloved, that's it. It's put to rest. He is, it is secure. Your identity in Christ is secure because it's based on he who changeth not. Amen? Let's go to Isaiah 714. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 714. Come on, the Lord is sweet. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, don't now... This is very fitting for the season to come. I know you've heard this in songs and you've heard this in some sermons, but let's look at this apart from a Christmas play, okay? Which, praise God for those, but that's not where we are today, okay? We're still in November. And the Lord himself will be and give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, L meaning the derivative of God, Emmanuel, he is with us. He is our present reality. By the way, Isaiah is written 698 B.C. Before Christ, 698 years goes this prophecy. And it's fulfilled. Everybody turn to Matthew chapter 1. We have three more. Matthew chapter 1, and let's look at verse 22 and 23. That's going to be you, Jessica. Matthew, uh, like that. Chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. 
Thank you. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken. Beloved, let me encourage you with this. We have two more scriptures. I want to get personal for a moment. Do you know if the Lord has spoken to your life? Okay. If the Lord, and you know the, the Lord of the word, the word of the Lord does not go out in vain, but it accomplishes the very purpose in which it was sent. That's in Isaiah 55. Do you know that things are going to take place just to fulfill what the Lord spoke in your life? Do you know that events are going, that like the Lord's going to make things happen just so his word can be faithful to you? Have you wrapped your mind around that, that the Lord can bend the universe around your life to fulfill a promise to you? Yeah. It's kind of like if I, if I tell my son that he can have something, and all of a sudden it's like I have the power to make it happen to fulfill my word to him. Whatever that, whatever that is. Keep in mind, I'm human, he's human, so, you know, oh, you want to go to the museum today. Okay, I'll get in the car, and I will we'll load the car, and we will make today museum day. Now, of course, the Lord is, that the stratospheres of his authority is about unmeasurably higher. But the Lord is with us. I want you to understand that if you, hey, I purpose that I'm going to fluid today. And it happened. Think about what the Lord has whispered to you. You will be this in the future. You will have this in the future. You will go here in the future. And that he is going to make history change to be faithful to you. That, I mean, that... Let us think about that. Why would you doubt knowing that God could, could bend history? And it's interesting because if you say, Praise be to God. Not faithful, well, even if you're not faithful, he remains faithful. Amen. This is a trustworthy saying, which is true and worthy of acceptance. If you live with him, right, you will, if you die with him, you'll live with him. If you endure with him, you will reign with him. If you deny him, he'll deny you. But if you are unfaithful, he will still remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Praise be to God. He is going to make history happen. Do not doubt, beloved. Nothing is hard for him. If we, being wicked, know how to give good gifts, how much more our Father in heaven will pour out the Holy Spirit upon you? Look, if I know how to fulfill a promise to my child, I am a child of God. How much more does God know how to fulfill a promise to you? This is why we have these beautiful examples, right? It's to build our faith. Let's finish here. Let's go to Isaiah 9. Praise be to God. Isaiah 9. Let's look at verse 6 and 7. Colette, why don't you... Actually, Kevin, you haven't read yet. Kevin, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. And then, Randy, you'll finish with Luke chapter 1. 32 and 33. Praise God. Amen. The zeal of Yah of hosts, the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts, he will do this. And let's, let's finish here in Luke chapter 1, 32 and 33. Amen. Prophecy, fulfillment. Prophecy, fulfillment. Prophecy, fulfillment. Beloved, this is all, all high-level ammunition. What does it need? An empty barrel. It needs a willing trigger finger. God's giving you ammo. Will you be a weapon for him to be used? And I mean this that against principalities and powers and rulers in high places. Will you be willing to be utilized by God on the front lines of this end times battle? In this spiritual conflict, will you be a special forces agent 
who gives everything so that the mission can be successful. Yesterday we were driving on the highway and we saw this awesome, beautiful purple semi. And on the side of the truck it had a beautiful cross and it said, all gave some, some gave all. And what that means is everyone went to war and sacrificed, you know, a couple of years, their social standing, you know, where, whatever they could have done if they didn't go to the service. But some people went there and they didn't come back. They gave all. I think the same is with the community of God. Everyone, they can show up. It's kind of like a hobby. But some people make it their life. And most of those people are in, they call, well, they're in ministry. I'm not called ministry, beloved. That's not, that's not what we're talking about here. Everyone is called to the ministry. Everyone is called to the ministry. Because Jesus is alive in us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we do this? Let's, let's close your Bibles. If anyone has any questions, we'll take them uh, after this. I want to, I if the worship team will come up.